Hi everybody, welcome back. Glad you're back here with us today. Uh, it's week nine of our virtual Sunday school. Uh, today, I want to start off talking about uh, taking a journey. Um, can you think about times when maybe you have taken a journey? Um, was it a long distance that you went or a short distance? Did it take a long time or a short time? Um, I've been to Europe twice, so that's a pretty long distance journey going all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, but in terms of time, it's not really that long. It's about eight or nine hours on an airplane, so it's not a really long time to be journeying, but it's a long distance. Um, another journey that I took that was both long in distance and in time was when I was in college, I was in the concert band and um, one year we went on a band tour all the way out to the East Coast. So we drove all the way from uh, Seward here in Nebraska and we made it all the way out to Washington DC and then came all the way back. And so each day we would drive, sometimes only a few hours, sometimes we would be driving a good chunk of the day, and then we would get to the church or the school where we were going to have the concert, and we would set up and have the concert and then tear down, and then the next day we would do it again. And so we would have basically 10 concerts over the course of 10 days. And uh, so that was a long journey, both in distance and in time and in uh, energy, I can tell you we were all really tired by the time we got back to campus at the end of that 10-day tour. Um, so whenever you've taken journeys, you probably have memories about it. You probably remember the fun times and the excitement of it. You may also remember uh, how tired you were or if there was some disappointment or if something didn't go quite right in the journey, you remember that too. That's all part of the memories that you have. So in today's lesson, we're gonna talk about a journey that Paul and Barnabas took. This is Paul's first missionary journey. So Paul, uh, we know from the Bible that Paul took three different trips, three different missionary journeys where he traveled around and preached and helped start new churches. And then uh, he took a fourth and final trip when he traveled to Rome. And of course, Paul ended up being martyred in Rome for preaching the gospel. So in the handouts that you have today, um, there should be two. One is uh, has pictures of the different characters in the story today. And it says, if you want to, it says you can color them in and cut them out and use them to follow along. Um, there's also a map in the handouts. Um, now this map doesn't have all the cities that we're going to be talking about, so what you might want to do is, if you have a Bible handy, most Bibles have maps in the very back, and a lot of them will have a map of um, <clears throat> either maps that actually show the route that Paul took on his missionary journeys, or even if they don't have that, they'll still have a map that shows all the different cities that are mentioned in the epistles. So you might want to, you might want to have a Bible handy, um, or you might want to, if you have a Bible that you're going to read out of, you might flip to the back and see if there's a map that you can use. So maybe if you don't want to uh, color in the little puppets and follow along, you can still take out the map and maybe try to draw with a pencil the route that Paul is taking on this trip. Okay, so the story of Paul's first missionary journey is in Acts 13 and Acts 14, so you can turn there, and we'll go through it piece by piece and talk about a little bit of it um, along the way. We probably won't read all of this because it's two pretty long chapters. So <clears throat> we'll start out in Acts 13, and we'll read the first few verses. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, 
Manian, a member of the court of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart from me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I called them. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogue to the Jews, and they had John to assist them. So who was it that sent Paul and Barnabas initially on their journey? It was the Holy Spirit. It wasn't, it wasn't some other people. It wasn't the other apostles in Jerusalem. It was the Holy Spirit who called Paul and Barnabas to go on this journey. <clears throat> so we know that God's plan of salvation is for all people. Um, a lot of times it will say it's for the, to the Jews and to the Greeks. Um, and by Greeks, they mean Gentiles or anybody who's outside of the Jewish community. And you'll notice that throughout uh, Paul's journey that he will frequently go first to the synagogue. He gets to a new city. He'll go to the synagogue first and preach to the Jewish people in the town. And then after he's done that, then he goes and preaches to the Gentiles. So you'll see that that's kind of a pattern that goes on during Paul's journey. So we'll continue at verse 6. When they had gone through the whole island, as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence, who summoned Barnabas and Paul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elamus, <clears throat> the magician, for that is the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight path of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately mist and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. So in this section, why does it say that the proconsul believed Paul and Barnabas? It says that he heard the word of God and he saw the, um, what God had done by blinding the false prophet that was there. Now a couple of notes about this. Um, a proconsul is a Roman governor of that region. So um, that's who the proconsul was, though he would be a pretty important person. And also it talks about how, it talks about Saul, who was also called Paul. So Saul would have been his Hebrew name. Um, obviously he was named after King Saul. Paul, or Paulus, as it would be in Greek or in Roman, that was his Roman name. Paul was um, a Roman citizen. So since he is frequently going to Gentiles and throughout the Roman uh, king, throughout the Roman Empire, he often goes by Paul because that's his Roman name. <clears throat> okay. Um, so at verse 13 it says, Now Paul and his companions set sail from Pamphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John left them and returned to Jerusalem. But they went on from Perga and came to Antioch in Pis uh, Pisidia, and on the Sabbath day they went into the synagogue and sat down. So again, he goes to a new city and he goes to the synagogue first. Now we're going to skip over, he gives a big long sermon here, and we're going to skip over that for a moment. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, so we're going to jump ahead to verse 49, at the end of chapter 13. And here it says, And the word of the Lord was spreading throughout the whole region, 
but the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city, stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their district. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and went to Iconium, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So the effect of Paul's preaching was that the word of God spread. <clears throat> it says the word of the Lord was spreading throughout the whole region, but it also says that some people decided to stir up trouble. They didn't like what Paul was saying, so they stirred up trouble, and basically Paul and Barnabas were forced to leave. So now we'll go on. We're in the beginning of chapter 14. It says... Now at Iconium they entered together into the Jewish synagogue and spoke in a way, in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. So again, they're going into the synagogue first. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers, so they remained for a long time speaking boldly for the Lord, who bore witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the people of the city were divided, some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. So again, the same thing that happened previously, he has some Jews that get jealous or don't like what he's preaching and they stir up people against Paul and Barnabas. So continuing with at five, when an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat and stone them, they learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia and to the surrounding country, and they continued to preach the gospel. Now at Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, and Paul, looking intently at him, seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking, and when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices and sang in Lyconian, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. And the, preach, the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance of the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gate, and wanted to offer a sacrifice with the crowds. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out of the crowd, crying, Men, why are you doing these things? We are also men of like nature with you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways, Yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the people from offering sacrifice to them. So who does it say that the crowd thought Paul and Barnabas were? Um, it says that they thought they were gods, the, the Greek or Roman gods of Zeus and Hermes. But Paul used that as an opportunity to explain to them um, about the true living God and explain that they were not gods. They had done this miracle through the power of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so then we'll finish up chapter 14. But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing he was dead. But when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up and entered the city, and on the next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. When they had preached the gospel to that city, they had made many disciples. They returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. And when they had spoken the word at Perga, they went down to Italia. And from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had fulfilled. 
And when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles, and they remained no little time with the disciples. So basically it says wherever they went, they appointed elders, they talked about their travels, and it says that they also remained with the fellow believers. So the Holy Spirit is growing the church through the preaching of the Word of God. And even today, just like in the early days of the church, God still calls people to be missionaries. Uh, they go out to all corners of the world and they preach the Word of God and they help to build up the church. And then God, of course, calls uh, men to be pastors to oversee these new churches and groups of believers. So we're going to go back to Paul's sermon in chapter 13. And we're not going to read through it all now. Um, maybe you can read through it on your own, or maybe with your family you can split it up and take turns reading sections of this. <clears throat> The sermon is really a very good outline for how um, we can tell others about God's love for them and his plan of salvation. Paul does a really good job of laying it out in his message. Uh, at the end is the best part, the happy ending, you could say. That's in verse 38 and 39, and it says, let it be known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this man, <clears throat> that's Jesus, forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and by him everyone who believes is freed from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. So, right, that's the good news of the gospel, that through Jesus' death and resurrection, we are freed from sin because that's not something that we could do on our own through the law. <clears throat> and if you go on a little bit more, it says, As they went out, the people begged that these things might be told them the next Sabbath. So the people were excited about the, what they heard, and they wanted to know more. They wanted Paul and Barnabas to come back the next week and talk some more about this. And if we continue, it says that, when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began to contradict what was spoken by Paul, reviling him. But Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken first to you, since you thrust it aside and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord, and as many were appointed to eternal life believed, and the word of the Lord was spreading throughout the whole region. So many of the Jews were jealous because of all the attention that the people were giving to Paul, and they were upset that he was preaching this word to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles were believing, and that made them very jealous. <clears throat> The one thing we want to remember is that we want to be like these Gentiles that were excited about the Word of God and wanted to hear more. Um, sometimes we don't always, we aren't always in the mood to hear God's Word. Sometimes we're tired. Sometimes we just, we feel like we've heard it all before and we don't need to hear it again. But there's always something new in God's Word for us to hear. So the verse for this week is from Romans chapter 1, verse 16, and it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay. Well, I'm glad you all were here with me this morning. Why don't we close with a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling missionaries and pastors like Paul and Barnabas. We pray that you would be with all missionaries who are proclaiming the good news of Jesus around the world 
And we pray that you would also be with pastors that are overseeing <clears throat> the flocks of people that you have given to them in the church. Lord, we also ask you for, our for, for forgiveness when we do not gladly hear and learn your word. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us throughout the coming week and that you would keep us all safe and healthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, hope you have a great rest of the day, and we will see you again next week. Bye.